Welcome to our 201 final presentations. So our students have been working for the last week to build this project. They had four days to build a complete front-end project from scratch. Um, and they've been working for the last four weeks on developing their skills. So it's been exciting to see what they've come up with in such a short amount of time. Uh, we have five groups presenting today. Um, so I will let you, the first group, take it away. Yay. Hello, welcome. Uh, my name is Richard. I am a software developer at Microsoft um, through the Apprenti program. Um, I've always liked technology. I've worked in technology companies um, basically since I started working. And I'm um, passionate about um, just using technology to make the world a better place. And so I'm excited to see what we can do with the skills we're going to learn here. Uh, good afternoon. My name is Chris Redman. I am an Air Force vet and software developer. Uh, my whole life I've had a passion for technology, whether that's building computers or playing video games. Uh, I started programming in the Air Force, and after I got out, I did a bit more through college, and I got picked up for Apprenti, and here I am. Uh, I learned a lot in the Air Force, and I hope to spread that knowledge around. It's very unique skills, and I hope to spread that among my community. Hello, my name is Jeremy Beck. Um, prior to coming here to Code Fellows, I was a Navy submariner where I became adept in nuclear power distribution and also submarine propulsion. Um, following that, I was wanting to pursue my passion for technology and I was accepted to the Microsoft Software and Systems Academy. Um, it's where I gained technical knowledge in database development, administration, and also analytical BI tools such as R and Power BI. Um, and then most recently, I was a veteran fellow IT business analyst at the Port of Seattle. So through all these experience, I proved that I excel in technical fields, um, working with diverse teams, and also that I'm dedicated to continuous learning. Um, and these are all skills that I hope to apply to my new journey to be a software developer. Hi guys, my name is Christina Gieselson. Um, Please don't mind my heavy breathing. My pants are extremely tight and I inhaled three slices of pizza, so I'm trying to like hold it together here. Okay, um, so like so many of you, my path here has really been non-linear. Previous to this, um, I was in music and I was in the beauty industry, and for the past few years, I've been a mom to two beautiful boys. And uh, there were two very interesting things happening in the past year. Uh, first, I was starting to recognize that I was probably becoming a case study for something called digital dementia. I don't know if you guys are familiar with this term, but basically it's where we begin to outsource our brain power to our digital devices because we always have them with us or we have access to a laptop. And I was realizing that um, I was losing my analytical skills, my problem solving skills. I just wasn't quick on my feet and that was really disconcerting to me. And so I after talking with my husband, I thought that maybe tech would be something that I could actually pursue, so it wouldn't be to my detriment, but rather to my benefit. Um, also, the second thing around this time was that I was starting to learn about something called blockchain technology, which is, I think we're still kind of in the genesis period of it, but I was very interested in this, and every time I saw a video of it or read up on it, I was getting really excited. So I thought, okay, uh, to me that was a sign that maybe tech is something that I should move towards. And like all of you, I went through the whole apprentice uh, vetting process and jumped those hoops and found myself here today. All right, so who wants to see our project? Yeah, sweet. So our team, um, we, uh, we met and we discussed and we said, we have a big issue to solve. And uh, I feel like this um, uh, website that we made is really gonna help uh, not only this class, but I think the rest of the world. So, <laughs> has anybody ever gone to BuzzFeed and taken a quiz to find out what Harry Potter character you are, et cetera, et cetera? Yeah, I'm sure everybody has, right? So we said, um, we went to BuzzFeed and we tried to find something that was really important to us, but we couldn't find it. So we said, we need to make our own app for this. And um, throughout this month and this class, we relate to our instructional staff. And um, what we really wanted to find out is who do we relate to the most and who are we most like? So I, I'm here to introduce you to the 201 Apocalypse. <laughs> <laughs> These are the four horsemen of the 201 Apocalypse. You may know them. And so 
the aim of our uh, website is for you to answer a few questions, um, select some answers based on um, heavy market research that we did with our um, instructional staff. We got answers from them. And so once you answer all the questions, we'll determine um, who are you most like. And that's the idea behind this. Um, some of my contributions to this were some of the starter JavaScript uh, code and um, a lot of the styling options. Um, I did this image here, which I'm particularly proud of. So that, that's what I did for this project. All right, so now we're gonna run through how the website works. So do I have a volunteer to pick results for our quiz? Sure. Yeah. All right, so we'll scroll down and look at these questions. I think if I pick Splashing Man, it'll probably tell me like, what direction I'm going towards. So I'm gonna pick Inhaling Sweets. Okay, we'll keep going. Said Italy. Thai curry, hands down. Thai curry. Now profession. Astronaut. Astronaut, hands down. <laughs> yeah. Next is favorite band. Uh, I really like glass animals, actually. Yeah. Glass animals, okay. Weekend activity. I guess I'll go sleeping. Sleeping. <laughs> good choice. Good choice. Spirit animal. Cat, another good choice. Favorite app? I'll go with Netflix. Netflix. And finally, your favorite color? Uh, still like blue guy today. All right. So we'll select that and we'll go to submit. And evidently, you are most like Justin. Let's <laughs> <laughs> uh, It looks like we have some results from before, but that's fine. So we'll just go to the bottom. Oh, you can do that too. So we'll take the quiz again, but uh, some technical details. Uh, so all these questions are radio buttons. That's how we set it up. Uh, we can go ahead and select just random ones, and we'll go down. Uh, the radio buttons are actually transparent. They're there, but you can't see them, and they're just, they're all like right about here. And we had to actually look up these bands. Most of us have never heard of them, so. I guess our TAs have unique music taste. And then hold off on selecting the last one and go ahead and hit submit. So this is a feature we built in where if you didn't select the last one, it'll tell you, or any of them, it'll tell you to take it again. And then you'll notice we have several results. I guess we got Justin again. <laughs> and this is from a previous test. So we also have the option, we can remove an option if we want. So we'll say remove Justin because we didn't want Justin's result. And we can actually leave the page and come back and they'll still be here. Uh, so a couple of contributions I made. Uh, all the images on the first page, those are all rendered using JavaScript. Um, as well as all the objects on this page, we rendered that using JavaScript as well. And I wrote a lot of the code to make sure that worked. So now we're gonna go to Jeremy and talk about some struggles we have with the project. All right, some of the, or at least one technical issue that we had was with local storage. We wanted to maintain persistent quiz results for multiple quiz results. Um, what we found we originally built um, the site was that it would just override the previous result. Um, so something that I contributed was I wrote a function that would verify, after you've taken the quiz on the home page, it would verify to see if there's something in local storage. And if there was something in local storage, it would save in a variable and they would push it to the, with the new results and then add it back to local storage. Um, if there were no results in local storage, it would just go ahead and create an empty array, um, which would allow us to, again, maintain persistent multiple quiz results. Um, another issue we faced was just kind of where to get started. We had the idea, we had the plan, we had the functionality that we wanted, but we just didn't really know where to begin in terms of declaring variables, objects, and constructors. Um, so we kind of overcame that by all choosing to program that together so that we're all on the same page. Um, and Christina will go into kind of how we handle our workflow. So coming into this last week, I think we were all a little nervous in terms of having like a group dynamic and how that would play out. But it was quite efficient. And I think by the end of the week, we had a very collaborative and positive experience. So what happened was on a typical day, we would come in and we would always sit together. At no point did any one of us go off and kind of program on our own. 
um, we would break off into partners and uh, I'll just run through an example. So in the morning, if I was partnered with Jeremy, then I would uh, be driver and he would be navigator on say like a HTML uh, file. And then the other guys would be working on CSS. And then in the afternoon, we would switch roles so that Jeremy would now be the driver and I would be navigator and vice versa. And coming into the next day, we would switch off on partners. So by the end of the week, we had worked with each other. And in terms of our Git workflow, uh, we really didn't have any issues with merges or anything like that, except Thursday. There was something very minor that came up. But other than that, um, part of uh, the thing that helped us was really checking out branches quite often throughout the day. And then after merging, we would all yell pull and we would all do that simultaneously. So. Um, yeah, the issue that came, came up on Thursday was basically a lack of communication on my part where I was working on a button on the results page and uh, Chris was working at the same time and we, I had not communicated that with Chris and so there was some overlap in the code but we just locally uh, made the revisions and pushed it and it was fine that resolved it. So yeah, overall very positive. Oh. So I think that's <laughs> that concludes our presentation, and I'm going to open up the floor now for any questions that you guys might have. Yes, Joanna. <laughs> what is your? Would you like to add anything if you had more time for the project? Uh, would you? Did you have any stretch goals that you haven't didn't have time to do? Yeah, definitely. We we did have some stretch goals. Um, we did do some of the stretch goals that we had outlined. For example, the animation, Richard had worked on some animation, like for example, this question coming in like that. Um, yeah, there as well. We had some stretch goals that were, I think, a little bit out of our reach. They were almost like projects in themselves. And I'll have Chris elaborate on that because this was an idea of his. Yeah, so we had kind of a couple. Uh, the first one that might have been more doable was to have additional quizzes built out. So there'd be a link somewhere on the page where you could click it and it would load a totally new page, uh, new quiz with its own results. Uh, that's more difficult because it's a lot of content to create. Uh, another stretch, I go, stretch goal idea we had was to actually make a form so a user could create their own quizzes. Um, and that speaks for itself as the, the technical difficulty. So. Those are just a couple of stretch goals we had. Uh, other questions? Yeah, have you guys come up with a um, theme for this layout? <laughs> so that's actually pretty funny because our website started with pastel colors. And as you can tell, um, we did a little switch from that. Went a little dark on the dark side. Um, we were going, we were trying to think of a, a name. And so we were going off the idea of who is your spirit animal out of the staff. And I was just searching images for like, um, what did we say, like mythical creatures or whatever. And I saw an image for the four horsemen and I was like, I think this is perfect for because <laughs> there's four of them. So we just kind of played off of that idea and the same um, colors that came out of that. Did Justin choose Flexing Man or did you guys assign Flexing Man? Uh, that was something Justin came up with. So he, that was a previous image he created and he just sent it to us and said, use this, it's cool. So. <laughs> Anyone else? Do you feel ready for the 301 apocalypse? <laughs> I, I think so. Yes. Uh, this project definitely challenged us, but at the same time, uh, I think we really took a step forward in showing what we can do as a group and even individually. So I definitely think we're all ready. Yeah. All right, uh, I think that's it. So thanks for your time.
Hello, uh, my name is Alex. Uh, I'm software development engineer. Uh, finally. <laughs> uh, apprentice. Software development apprentice. Apprentice, yeah. Uh, yeah, I've already been a journalist, an analyst, uh, automation engineer, a database engineer, data engineer. Uh, so it was a long path to be here. Uh, <laughs> glad to be here. Uh, actually, I want to say thank you, guys. Uh, thank you, Aaron. Thank you, Elisa, uh, for being a great teammate, uh, for your openness to my ideas, I hope. I was open to your ideas too, uh, for sharing your vision about how our application should look. Thank you. Uh, hi, um, I guess I'm close enough. <laughs> uh, my uh, my Aaron is name. Oh wait, no, wait. no, 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 no. That's, that's not right. That's not right. I'm just a little nervous. Uh, my my name's Aaron. Um, I'm also trying to be a software development engineer apprentice. Uh, <laughs> my background's in uh, being a mechanic, like fixing trucks in the army. So, not quite sure why I'm here, but I am, and I'm really excited. I, uh, I found a passion for technology. I think <clears throat> I like just a like a small, like young age. Um, I've always loved it. My dad's always been in it. My uncle. Um, so I think I'm really excited to finally get to this point. Where when I can at Code Fellows, take it forward, create a great life for me and my daughter Emma. Go from there. So, yeah. Hello. Oh, it's loud. Uh, my name is Elisa LaBeouf. Um, before Apprentice, I was doing lots of random, boring things that I didn't have a lot of interest in. Um, so, I'm just excited to be challenged. Um, sometimes a lot challenged, uh, but that's good. Um, yes. So, let's introduce you to our product. Uh, what we wanted, or what we set out to solve, is that when people come to Seattle, they don't know what they're wanting to see, or if you haven't been here for a long time, um, you don't know where to go. And sometimes you want to go to these places, or maybe you want to find somewhere and then take notes on it, or just plan out your adventure, um, but you'd like to do that all digitally. So that is what we are solving here. So I'm going to pass it off to you guys to demo and tell us more about it. So it'd be nice to see how this actually works. Um, so here's the, the front page. This will be you'll be uh, greeted with right when you go to our uh, our web page. Um, kind of like Elisa was saying, general ideas to kind of pick around and find places you'd like to visit. So we'll have Alex scroll through a couple of our uh, our pictures. Um, up in the top right, you'll see that uh, it kind of has a little name, so you know it's kind of what you're looking at. I'm not originally from Seattle, so like the Fremont Troll, I would have had no idea <laughs> right away. And uh, you know, when you find some places you like, you can uh, go ahead and click the visit later button. Um, yeah, and you'll have a little pop-up saying, add it to my notes. And uh, you can see up in the top left, there's the uh, my notes. It gives you a little counter to how many places you've added. Uh, so you know kind of like what you're gonna be taking notes on, or at least a number. Um, so we'll go ahead and pick a couple more places to take notes on. Yep, so uh, once you uh, kind of get a good idea of places you want to <clears throat> learn a little bit more about, take some notes on. We'll go to click on take notes or my notes. They both work just fine. And uh, you'll be greeted with a uh, nice little interface. Um, give you the name, address, a little bit, to, a little bit about it. Um, on our locations, we have a little tiny icon. It's kind of hard to see on the projector, but uh, it'll give you some like Google Maps information, kind of tell you where it is from uh, like your current location, you know, kind of like time to get there. Uh, Alex is Russian. So, sorry if you can't read the, uh, Google, the Google Maps, but uh, that is showing you how to get to Pike Place, so. <laughs> and then, uh, of course, the biggest feature of our web page is to uh, be able to take notes. Um, this will save on input. Every time you type a key, your note will be saved. So, uh, go ahead and take a note on Pike Place. All right, um, say you... Uh, you can take before, after notes. Um, you know, if you leave the page, refresh, that will persist. It'll always be there. So, 
So there it is, our note was saved. Um, say you're done with it, you don't really care to ever go back, you know, that's the way it is. Uh, you can go ahead and delete that by clicking the little X in the top right corner. Take it off your notes, out of your, uh, out of mind. Um, say you don't have any notes, you'll be greeted with a nice little message to direct you back to attractions. And then uh, you start your exploration over again. So that's about it. And uh, I'll pass it off to Alex so he can kind of explain some of the technical difficulties we had while, while doing this. Yeah, thank you. Uh, the first thing uh, we have to solve uh, was a carousel uh, for pictures. Uh, actually, there was mm, there were plenty of different libraries. Uh, you can do it yourself in pure JavaScript. Uh, it's a lot of efforts, uh, actually. So, after some consideration, and I believe I spent something like a day on it. Uh, I decided that uh, we need something small to handle all of this interaction. So, yeah, we chosen. We have chosen one, and it's here. Uh, what was next? Uh, I think uh, the most exhaustive thing was to uh, get together content, all photos, all descriptions, uh, to be sure that license uh, requirements are met. And yeah, it was very exhaustive, except for me. So, what's, it, what's your guys? Um, I think, uh, I guess um, I did a lot of the JavaScript for the first page. Um, so like we used that nice library that uh, Alex found. It wasn't too hard to use. That was actually the easiest part of this first page, getting that really cool carousel motion. Um, a lot of my struggles came through just uh, getting the buttons to work and uh, saving the local storage so it all looks nice and it works. Um, I think the biggest issue we had as a group, even though it's not too much of a focus for 201, was just user experience. Um, since we went ahead and decided to do like the whole background to change, you don't want to add too much to the first page to uh, you know kind of override the, the pictures. You want them to really be met with really good pictures, right? So it was really kind of a hard balance to get them to really figure out what they should be doing when they go to our page. Um, I'd say that's the biggest technical difficulty, um, but I'm still very happy. I think the the end result looks really cool. So pass it off to Lisa. Uh, so I think one of our biggest accomplishments as a team was really our workflow, too. Um, we really communicated well with what we were working on. Um, being a group of three, we really did, as many of you saw, had the monitors on both sides, so we would continuously be like, no, I don't like that. Yes, this is working. Uh, change that color. Um, and just kind of had, what do we have, like five monitors in the end going? Um, <laughs> so that was Andy. Um, and so it allowed us to really, like, pair program, but in a group of three, uh, the whole time. Uh, so we really knew what was going on um, in each kind of area and to say, like, look at these changes I'm making. Are we good to push this or do whatever? So with Git also, we did a lot of issues. So we knew our exactly every day kind of what our MVP was and what our stretch goals were. Um, and so we could kind of go in there and when we were making or, you know, done with an issue, we could check that off and close that issue. And so every day we would uh, you know, log new issues that we needed to solve the next day or be able to kind of know where we were at every day that we were doing it. Um, and so for GitFlow, we also used branches for everyone and made it really clear of this is the branch, we named them for our names and exactly what we were doing, so it was very clear. And I tried to get them to use hand signals for the pull request, but no one wanted to. <laughs> <laughs> so that was my challenge. <laughs> But otherwise, it was it was really we communicated quite clearly on those ends. So, you guys want to add anything else? Okay. Ready for questions? What was the hand signal? Oh, I want to do like pull request. Yes. But <laughs> yeah, yeah. They wanted sounds. I would not make the sounds. <laughs> yeah. You can't have one or the other. You have to have one. Yeah. Yeah. Trey. You look at me like that. <laughs> uh, what caused you guys to think about this idea? How did this happen? Actually, 
You know, we started uh, from a uh, spinning wheel. Uh, an idea was to build a game, uh, which it was primarily Aaron's idea. Uh, I was thinking how to add something more see at least to it. So we moved to, to this layout. Actually, here was a random button, uh, so you you don't need to choose, you just push a button and give the result. Uh, but we decided to remove it right now, so maybe later. Is your site mobile friendly? <laughs> sure. Uh, about 80%. <laughs> Um, yeah, no, it uh, it really does look pretty good. At least the first page looks very good, mobile friendly. Um, right. Yeah, it looks like this is on a Google Pixel 2, so. Um, yeah, the, the, the first page does look pretty well. It wasn't our full intent to make it mobile friendly. It's kind of like a, a lot of the tricks and whatnot Alex had kind of just made it easy to do that as we were going. Um, Second page, I don't know if that got fixed. It was a little off, but it worked pretty well too. Um, so yeah, so it's mostly mobile friendly. You could still use the app if that answers your question. Thank you. I guess I can answer that more of a, like how I did it personally. Yeah. Um, I love questions. I love asking questions. If I don't know how to do something or I want to know what somebody else is doing, I just ask it right away. Like I fire it off. Um, I don't like leaving it in my head because I'll either forget it or it just won't be as meaningful like maybe an hour from then. Yeah. That's kind of like how I like to deal with it. Um, I don't know how you guys kind of approach that. I think the same and we also sort of I think that's why we were had so many monitors going so that we could really see what each other was doing um, and so that we could ask those questions constantly to say what is it that you're building here or how is this designed just so that we were kind of all involved and not and, and a lot of the pair programming so that we could help with those kind of things but is that what you're asking no then what then my question was what, is your, what was your strength and your input mostly and then where were your strengths? Oh, right. uh, I'm gonna go strength CSS. CSS, okay. Eh, That's a great strength. I mean, you know, like you can never be 100% on CSS, can you? But I can Google like no one else. Yeah. <laughs> um, so I guess growth, JavaScript. Um, so, yeah. I'm probably about the opposite. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not as design-minded. I think I'm pretty, you know, comfortable and confident in like what I can do in JavaScript. So like I uh, really enjoy doing a lot of the JavaScript for the page. Um, CSS, uh, I think Alex and Lisa maybe had a little bit more design-minded approach. A lot of my ideas get shot down, so. <laughs> but it's, it's, it's in a constructive way, you know, like I, I accept it, you know, we, we compromised and we came up with this, so it looks, it looks great, right? But uh, yeah, so strength, JavaScript, growth, probably CSS, I'd say. Mm, I tend to go down to the rabbit hole as down as I can, uh, and uh, it, and uh, never ask questions. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, thank you for teaching me, <laughs> answering questions, stopping me from digging, and uh, I am trying to ask questions too. You asked me a question yesterday. Uh, I think that's strength too, because uh, I can find out anything. <laughs> JavaScript, I believe, and uh, maybe the whole support for for the team.
Thank you. First page, very little. <laughs> um, it, it was we started off with the wireframe. We were going like exactly how it was. Um, it's kind of like how we were saying we were just passing ideas around, communicating. Over time, it just kind of morphed itself into what it is now. Um, at first, you know, the the whole carousel wasn't going to be the whole page. Um, I think uh, I don't know if it was Alex or Lisa proposed the idea. We tried it out. It looks great, right? So we uh, we just kind of went with it. And that's kind of when that whole user experience kind of came into play. You know, we had to really think like, okay, our wireframe, we designed it with the user in mind. So then we had to really kind of refigure that out as we were going, so, yeah. Um, yes, yeah, so I think that in the beginning especially, that was one of our biggest challenges is that we wanted to give it, you know, we had originally like a paragraph explaining what the site was doing, but if, with the image and there was just too much on there that we couldn't figure out how to not give anybody information, but like intrinsically, like go to this site and figure out what to do uh, on a button. <laughs> um, yeah, and so we went through a lot of kind of iteration and I think on the second day it was like, what if we name it this? What if we name it that? And we thought we had like this really great thing and then we went and tested it with people and they were like, I don't know what I'm supposed to do here. <laughs> and we were like really disappointed by that of like, but we like it. <laughs> so we kind of found we had to remove that random button because it just, for 10 locations and having a minimalistic design that we just needed to make it simpler. And so that was kind of interesting to find out. I guess I'll, I'll just add that um, that random button's still in the code. It's still very usable. Um, it's, this is very adaptable. We could have five locations, we could have a hundred locations. It'll work the same. Um, it's just uh, not being displayed by the CSS right now. So, yeah. I hate people having a good question, but how important was having other people come in to test it that valuable? Uh, very, very important. <laughs> like, uh, um, First couple days, maybe not so much, but around Wednesday, maybe we started kind of passing around. I'd say, oh, or yeah, maybe a little bit Tuesday too. Yeah, um, our buttons had like a lot more awful names at first. Um, <laughs> that's like button number, button name number twenty or something like it. They really went through a lot of name changes and what. How did it feel to get all of that and be like, oh my god, is it working? Uh, kind of crappy. I mean, <laughs> I mean, you don't want to like you know work hard and then somebody tell you like you know I don't really like the way that, that looks and then. But it, I think once we kind of took feedback, um, it's kind of like uh, whenever you click visit later and it goes to the next page, that was uh, Brian's idea. Yeah. You know, so like we, we actually took that feedback in and we, I think we made something really cool. So. Yes. Uh, Michelle? I, no, it was oh, 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 and uh, that's our presentation. Yeah. <laughs> My name's Andrew Powers, and this is our team. Um, we produced Mental Map, and we'll get into that a little bit. Before that, I'll introduce myself. I am Andrew Powers, and if you can scroll down for a bit. Um, I have been a STEM educator for the last three years and running a nonprofit with my twin brother. That's actually my twin brother. <laughs> they didn't know. I was kind of hurt. but. Um, <laughs> We've ran this nonprofit so we can teach emerging technologies to underrepresented communities so that they can build self-sustainable communities. Um, and I've jumped into being a software developer, same with everybody else here, so that I could gladly and positively affect the future. So I'm gonna pass this along to my partner so he can speak on who he is. Alexander. Uh, my name is Danur De Leon. I have a background in mechanical engineering. 
uh, working with machines, I noticed how uh, a lot of them were becoming automated, and uh, that sparked my curiosity on uh, what was used in order to make it automated, so I figured it'd be a good idea to, to learn, and that has led me to where I am right now. Uh, yeah, I think it'd be cool to be able to merge my two backgrounds together uh, so that I'm a well-rounded person with knowledge to, to yeah, apply to machines and their automation. Kendra. Hi, I'm Kendra Ellis, and I'm really tired. Um, I'm also a software developer, and prior to software development, I studied foreign language, so French and Russian, and was always really interested in natural languages. Um, after college, I worked in a number of sectors, including government, healthcare, uh, actionware, just a number of things. And if there's one thing I learned in college, it was how to be critical. <laughs> so um, across all those jobs, something that I really picked up on in each was uh, certain processes or uh, interactions that I felt would really benefit from some kind of technical automation or some tool. So eventually I went back to school to study computer science, um, and I just finished my degree last week. <laughs> I'm really happy to be here. Really looking forward to building tools that make other people's jobs a little bit easier. Hey, I'm Carlos. Uh, this is my second time at Codefellas. Uh, I didn't have a background in software development, and I, um, yeah, um, yeah, the first time through was truly a fire hose, and uh, I didn't practice my skills as much as I should have afterward, and they began to fade. Um, this time around, it's been a lot different. Apprenti uh, revived the dream, and I'm trying again. Um, yeah, I'm excited to start at Microsoft and uh, see how these skills translate to being an apprentice. Um, so we made an app called Mental Math. Um, initially, we wanted to make something that was a tool that we could use, that something that we would actually want to have around. Um, the uh, common denominator between all of us was that we were in this class and uh, we all needed to study. Um, so we wanted to make some flashcards and we wanted initially to do JavaScript questions, but uh, to generate those questions dynamically uh, with new questions and new answers seemed to be too difficult. So we simplified it and we do addition, subtraction, and math in sets of 10 and um, flashcards, so Kendra will walk us through a demo. Okay, so I'll start off on the home page, which is the page that a user is usually greeted with. Um, if you're a return user, then your name will be saved in local storage, and they'll welcome you back. But if that's not you, you can always say that's not me. Um, typically, you'll be prompted to enter a username. <laughs> and then you can select which deck you'd like to study, and as soon as you click on it, it'll take you to the quiz page. So let's go with this one. Um, immediately at the top, you'll see there's a timer, which you can hide if it stresses you out. I always hide it. Um, and then right underneath there, there's a progress bar, which will show you how far through the deck you, um, you were at. And then on the flashcard, there is an answer at the top with three different selections. Um, so when you've decided which answer you think is correct, you can click on it, and the card will flip over. And it'll tell you whether you got it right or wrong. You'll see the check mark flash, or the X kind of do a little dance to indicate whether you are correct or incorrect, and then you can move on to the next card. Um, so we'll let you guys shout out the answers <laughs> as we went through the rest of the deck. So x-axis is time in seconds, and y is your score. 
um, if you hover over a certain data point, it'll give you a little bit more information about that particular quiz. So we can see that this one was addition, and then we got an eight out of 10, and it took us 78 seconds. Um, and then down below, we decided we just wanted to list a history of the user's scores as well, just in case they wanted to have a different sort of visualization of their results. And um, we've created this other user who was taking the quiz many more times, so that you can see that addition shows up as green points, subtraction is red, and multiplication is sort of gold color. And then you can hide different sets if you're only interested in seeing addition. Andrew's going to talk a little bit about our workflow and communications. Thank you, Kendra. Okay. So, um, for the most part, what we focused on was pair programming. We worked together to specifically make sure there were little to no merge conflicts. At the beginning, we got a few. So, if you scroll up a bit, you'll see that the home and about and results, we actually created a CSS and JavaScript file for each so that when we were pair programming, we could work in each one separately as a team or as individuals. And that's how we avoided most of our merge conflicts. Um, I'm kind of very proud of the flip animation and the chart because those two things kicked my ass and I finally had a little help with the team to defeat them. So that was my own little game. But for the most part, we hit all our MVPs. We even hit our stretch goals by randomizing the numbers so that each quiz was a different thing each time. But we did have a few obstacles, which I'll pass along to my partner to explain. Uh, so as Andrew mentioned, uh, we decided to implement one of our stretch goals, which was to randomize the variables used in the equations. Uh, one of the issues that we were facing is that because we were uh, first setting the answers, we wanted to make sure that there wasn't a pattern that was forming so that it would actually test your knowledge and not just choose the one that's in between the two values. So uh, we had to create some functions in order to be able to recognize that and uh, make sure that there weren't any duplicates or uh, returning a second correct answer. Uh, another challenge that we had were the animations, making sure that they were firing at the appropriate time and not taking up the entire screen. <laughs> that pretty much sums up our project. We can open it up to questions. How'd you guys get the chart on there? It's style sheet, style.css, which wow. set the style for like, all of the pages, like the titles and the main text, and then for okay. individual pages, which is cool. How did you guys get that bar to populate like that? How did we get the bar to populate? It's just two divs. Um,
<laughs> Hello, everyone. Uh, my name's Neth. Uh, I'm that guy over there. Uh, I've got a degree in philosophy, which mostly means I've been mostly unemployed for the last three years or so. Uh, I got into uh, programming and web development specifically because I really liked the sort of instant gratification that comes along with, oh hey, I made a thing, I can check it out, see how well it works. Um, so over the past three years or so, I've been working on becoming a full stack web developer, which is pretty much what I consider myself now. I mostly like to work in the MERN stack because it's a fun word to say. MERN. MERN. Uh, I started in mean stack, but I didn't like it as much. It, it, it's not as cool a word. It sounds a little, um, uh, I don't know what's the word I'm looking for here. Angular. It's very pointy. Uh, so that's my story, and uh, I guess uh, I'm going to pass it off to. Hey guys, I'm Trey. Um, like Carlos, I was here before. I did 201 when I first was in there. I mean, it was fairly difficult to me, at least. But what it did, it taught me how to learn. After that, unlike Carlos, I actually went and programmed a lot. I uh, looked at different <laughs> libraries. Uh, I mean, I expanded my skills, and the printing gave me the opportunity to come in and actually show what I can do. I, uh, my background was in QA. I did QA analysts. I started off as a tester. Right before I got here, I was a QA engineer. I did a lot of test automation. I realized like software development is actually where I want to be. And that's about it. Hey guys, uh, so it's gonna look like I'm reading off a, a script. Cause that's probably cause it's what I'm doing right now. Um, but I'm Jimmy and I'm a software crafter and I have a background working with networks and servers. So that actually shaped my mind to uh, optimize and automate, and that's what I think about constantly. Um, I call myself a software crafter because I view each software solution as an art, and that's because each take on a problem is, there's only one take on a problem, but there's many forms to a solution, and I'm looking forward to joining the industry to find my next art piece. What's up, I'm Nick, I'm nervous. Uh, I'm from Bama, and I'm a software developer, I guess. Uh, I have a background in sales, uh, security, and uh, biofuel production. Um, I decided to get into software development because I like technology, and I think that we, have a, we can go very far with it. There's no, like, I guess I wouldn't say I don't, have, I don't have a passion about anything per se. I just like it a lot. So if you can go back to the, the home page. So hold on for a second. All right, so JAG, what is it? JAG stands for Just Another Game. And this is a browser-based trivia game uh, where there are no winners, there's only losers. Um, the concept is around, based around, there's a lot of games on the market or you know, on the web where every, there's always a winner. And this game, we wanted there to be no winners, but just a loser, right? So you answer questions and uh, depending on if you get them wrong or right, if you get them wrong, you lose points until there's a loser. So I'm going to talk about, uh, before we demo the game, I'm just going to talk about a little bit of our dynamic, our team dynamic and our uh, workflow, our GitHub workflow. So we actually originally had a plan to merge um, each of our uh, pull requests in the morning. So we would meet up and merge our features. But the moment we started actually working, we actually instantly paired up into and started doing pair programming. So instead of having actually to meet up and merge, we actually just just said, told the other team that we were going to merge. And then the, uh, we didn't have to worry about many merge conflicts that way, just because we could instantly pull down. And we separated that uh, each feature, and each team would just be working on different features and different uh, files, basically. So we never really encountered too many conflicts. Um, but yeah, we did a lot of pair programming, so we each kind of touched a part of the code. And I'm going to throw it over to Trey. Well, I'm going to talk about the problems that we had, some of them, how we solved them. I think one of the biggest issues we had was not uh, following our conflict resolution. We all said that we were going to go to a vote for stuff, and a lot of times we just focused on who could overpower who. And that definitely didn't work out, because 
it made kind of like ostracized you. You kind of kind of went to yourself. But the para program it helped and it brought us back. I think another big issue that we actually had was we kind of undersold ourselves. Everything became a stretch goal. We're like, oh, we want to do this. We want to do this. This is a stretch goal. This stretch goal. But then eventually they became our features. And pretty much like one thing I personally did wrong was that I kind of just got in that mentality as I'm going to work on this. I'm going to take this down. My ideas are, are what the ideas should be for this. And Neth and them, they kind of showed me that that's incorrect. Mm -hmm. And they showed me the proper way to how to work in a group and not push just my strengths, actually utilize their strengths. And I mean, we could work on our weaknesses together too as well. There's Neth to demo. All right, so here comes the fun part. This is where uh, I get to realize my dream of being a game show host. Uh, we're going to demo this, and we're going to need a couple of volunteers. This game uh, requires uh, two to four players. Uh, the more the merrier. So I got two back there, one up there, one up there. Yeah, come on up, guys. Let's give them a hand, everybody. Come on. Oh, yeah, is this, this is true. Okay, so we're going to go over the rules really fast. Basically, uh, we're just going to kind of go... In a, in a loop, everyone's going to get two questions, question, 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 you know. Uh, each each uh, turn, if you want to call it that, you will have the option of taking the question yourself. You'll get to see a category. You can take the question yourself, or you can pass the question to another player of your choosing. If you take the question yourself and get it right, you get nothing. But if you get it wrong, you will lose 100 points. However, if you pass it, and that person gets it right, you will lose 200 points. If the person that you pass it to gets it wrong, they lose 100 points. Everyone starts at 500 points. Get out of the right way here so the camera can see all this. Whoever loses all their points first, or whoever has the lowest score by the end of eight turns, is that game's loser. It's all right. That, that, that's why we have the passing feature, so you can just pass them off to everybody else. All right, uh, so let's start the game. Let's get four players on there. Uh, what is your name is? Rebecca. Rebecca, let's get Rebecca's name on the board there. Can I get your name, please? Sasha. Sasha, let's get Sasha's name there. Uh, and your name, sir? Alex. Alex, okay, all right, he's already got it. And your name, sir? Yeah, it's Brian. Brian, great, thanks. <laughs> thanks everybody for joining us today, being our victim, I mean, uh, players, contestants. Uh, yeah, let's start. So uh, action is going to be on Rebecca. Rebecca, your category is, uh, I'm going to stand over here, 60s music. Would you like to pass that question to somebody else, or would you like to take it yourself? I will answer it. Oh. OK. <laughs> Covered by Phil Collins in 1982, what group released You Can't Hurry Love in 1966? I'm just going to choose the birds. The birds. Was it the birds? It was not the birds. I'm sorry. <laughs> All right, Sasha, your category is video games. What would you like to do? I'll answer it. All right, we've got some brave souls up here. Which classic puzzle game is the brainchild of Alexei Pajitnov? <laughs> we don't know the answer. What is Tetris? Is it Tetris? It is Tetris. Good job. All right, Alex, your category is comics. What would you like to do? Uh, make Rebecca answer. All right. <laughs> Rebecca, Wolverine made his first appearance in what comic series? Oh, I, I think I can do this. X-Men? Was it X-Men? It was actually not X-Men. I know. All right. Brian, your category is women in movies. What would you like to do? I think I'm going to try and get Rebecca out of this game. So. <laughs> it's going to be more fun, though. Sofia Coppola has directed several films, including all but which of the following? The Virgin Suicides, Lost in Translation. I don't know the last two, but I'm gonna just choose The Hurt Locker. This is The Hurt Locker. It was. Oh. Good job. Get it, girl. All right, uh, you got control now. Video games, what would you like to do? I'm gonna make. Oh. Does Brian been? know this? Okay, I'll make Brian answer it. Oh. All right, <laughs> revenge. What was the name of the fighting game starring a basketball player released in the 90s? with 
Shaq Fu. Was it Shaq Fu? It was Shaq Fu. <laughs> we might actually go the whole, the whole, the whole game here. Uh, 90s one hit wonder, Sasha, what would you like to do? I, I'm gonna answer. This is my comfort place. <laughs> All right, awesome. Which one hit wonders one hit was the theme to the sitcom Friends? That was Deep Blue Something. Was it Deep Blue Something? It was not Deep Blue Something. <laughs> Uh, 60s music is your category, Alex. What would you like to do? Uh, I'll answer. I'm going to answer. All right. In Sgt. Pepper's Lonely Hearts Club Band, which Beatle is introduced as Billy Shears? Ringo. Was it Ringo? It was Ringo. <laughs> Last question. Here we go. 90s one hit wonders. What do you want to do? I'm going to hand this off to Alex. Alex. Yeah. going to hand this off to Alex. All right. Chumbawamba had a brief run-in with mainstream success with their 1997 song called what? <laughs> tub thumping. Was it tub thumping? Was it tub thumping? Tub, you said tub, tub thumping? Yeah. It was <laughs> tub thumping! <laughs> so which means we actually have a tie. <laughs> Becky and Brian are today's losers. Congratulations, guys. Everyone, you have to be in such good sports. And uh, with that, we will open the floor to questions. <laughs> All right, yes. Where did you come up with your question pool? Um, I actually wrote a lot of them. Uh, I know Trey, Trey wrote some. You wrote some as well, right, Nick? Okay. Either Google. His was Google. Any more? Yes? How did you come up with the idea? How did we come up with the idea? We, uh, hmm? I don't. You? Yeah. Okay, so it started off when we were pitching project ideas. We knew we wanted to play a game. For some reason, I don't know if there's something bad with our team, but we wanted people to, to lose, which was kind of weird. But we wanted to actually do a game similar to like phase 10. And then I think Michelle shot out that we should do a trivia game and I turned it down and she, she kind of like motivated me up to do it. And then from there, we kind of just threw our own little stuff in and we got the idea. Yeah, I've always been a huge fan of trivia, so that was an easy sell for me. I actually thought we came up with the idea, not Michelle, so. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> you all had the idea and we're like, I don't know if we can do this. And I was like, no, you're fine, you got this. Okay. <laughs> She's saying we came up with the idea and that, that we didn't think we could do it. She motivated us to actually do that. And uh, I'm happy we did. I'm really happy with what we, what we made here. I'm, uh, I'm pretty proud of this. Any other questions? Yes? Yeah, you guys have a lot of like, awesome features. It looks great. I'm just curious if, uh, given more time, were there like, stretch goals you would have done or would like to do? Timer? timer? Um, yeah, a timer would have been a thing we probably would have liked to have added if we had a little bit more time. Um, other than that, mostly just like adding more questions to it because I love making up trivia questions. Uh, yes? I think blinking uh, scores when it decreases just to show that someone's points are taken away. Yeah, yeah, I did have a little trouble implementing some of the animations for, uh, it was really important that we had some animations going on because I don't like it when like websites just change. I like to have a little animation just kind of give the user some feedback, uh, let them know like, hey, something over here changed. Uh, so I wanted to get an animation for the scores specifically that I couldn't quite get working. So yeah, that was the thing that I, I wish I had more time to work on. Uh, another thing would be a feature where well, we wanted you to be able to pick categories and categories be worth X amount of points and stuff like that, but I mean with the limited amount of time we couldn't do it. Not say we couldn't do it, but we didn't attempt it. So we kept our eye on the prize. Yeah, actually I think like we suge somebody suggested like just throwing the category up there and making somebody decide whether to keep the question or not. And I actually liked that idea a lot. So I don't even know if I would have changed that <laughs> if, if we had more time to be honest. Um, yeah, I think those are the big ones. Uh, is there anything else? Yes? Moving on to 301, is there trivia databases that you can pull from like, for questions? There are trivia databases. Uh, I know that you were looking up one. We, were, we were, were even looking into just trying to use one, but for the scope of this project, we needed to kind of keep everything more uh, just localized. Um, 
I mean, using an, like a, a trivia API would mean that I don't get to make up the questions anymore, and that's less fun for me, but I mean, we could probably do that. Or we could make our own API. That would be fun, actually. I would totally enjoy doing that. Anything else? Anyone else have anything, any parting words for, for our lovely audience? All right. Thanks. Thanks, everybody. I was a project manager with the Corps of Engineers, and I'm also a reserve officer in the uh, Army Reserves. Um, about a year ago, I just really started taking a look at uh, kind of hit the reset button on my career, and I've always been drawn to the tech sector. And I think you know, if we just take a look at what we as a team accomplished and what everyone in this class has accomplished, which kind of really just displays what I find passionate about about coding, that's just being able to get our hands in there and create. So I just really look forward to uh, working with you guys and then working over at Microsoft and just developing all these uh, skills. Hi, my name is Suzanne and I'm a full stack engineer, apprentice. And um, what I previously did was I worked in Amazon and I did a lot of legal work where I did custom contracting and didn't really have too much of a tech background, but I was heavily influenced by what I can improve in our workflow process globally. And so that really got me interested in programming. And I'm really excited for uh, learning more about like AIs, especially at, at Microsoft and also cloud services. Uh, hi, I'm Rebecca. I'm a full stack software developer. I have a background in teaching. And as much as I love my students and I'll miss them always, um, I was craving a career in which I'd be challenged every single day and pushed to learn every day, where the problems would be changing and they didn't have to do with behavior management. Um, and so sometime last year, thank you, <laughs> sometime last year I picked up Eloquent JavaScript and I was like, hey, I'm going to try this thing. I wrote my first line of JavaScript, I solved, solved a problem, and the feeling I got from that was just incredible. And since that day, since I started to learn, how to program, I wake up every single day knowing exactly what I want to do, and that's a new, amazing feeling for me. Hey everyone, I'm Jeff. I'm a software developer apprentice with a background in design. Um, I, growing up, I've always been attracted to technology you know, as a whole, and was really you know, observing as the interweb internet <laughs> evolved over the years, streamlining user experience and bring joy and convenience to everyone across the globe. So naturally, when the time came, I uh, went and studied UX, UI design in college. Uh, in my last semester, I got in touch with programming and completely fell in love with that concept of being able to not just you know, design something, but also implement it and make it usable. So yeah, really looking forward to you know what we could accomplish you know, going forward. So with that, let us dive into our web page. All right, so this is what we spent the last four days making. Uh, we really got the inspiration when we like, just came together, like, all right, we want to make some sort of platform game. And we were talking about what do we want that to look like, and we found inspiration in Icy Melt. So, <laughs> oh, Icy Tower. <laughs> and uh, so we, we modeled it after that, and we called our game Spicy Tower. Um, so the way that you interact with the game, you can read the instructions on the screen here, but really you're just moving right to left using the key uh, key arrows, and then the jump takes you up and down. Uh, use up up here for that. So if you want to dive right into it, so as you can see, we've put a lot of effort into the pixel art, into the into putting the platforms together. We 
want to make it uh, something that wasn't too too elaborate that you know would be beatable, but gave characters incentive to like move all throughout the map. So we put these coins on there. Um, you get points every time you collect them, and then as you work your way up the platform and you get into that lava stream up there, go to it. The character just shoots you up, and then you get brought into the uh, high score page where you go and you put your name, and then if you play through, you can see you know how you do against other people. So that's our demo of the game, and I'll hand it off to Susie where she can talk about how we made it all work. Okay, so um, much of this game, we got to use a library called Phaser. It's a very popular um, gaming framework that's used in a lot of indie games, and that helped us implement a lot of the game physics. For example, whenever an object collided with each other, it allowed that um, the character wouldn't just fall through the platforms, or when you make a jump, it's not just going to stay in the same place. It actually allowed for gravity to happen and be able to come back down. And um, one of the biggest challenges that we had initially was implementing Phaser and getting it to work. Um, we also found out that cross-origin testing um, was a huge problem because we didn't know whether or not what was going wrong or whether or not Phaser was working initially until we changed the link and where it was pulling the data from. And just getting the platforms to display on the page initially um, took the majority of the time. And once we got our first sprite on the page, it was one of the best feelings that we had because we were like, we have a tile! And we were able to actually see things being created and very proud of our team. Uh, yeah, so I worked a lot on the JavaScript on both the, the scoreboard page, so calculating those high scores and rendering them, on, rendering them onto the page. Um, I can say that CSS is definitely not my strong suit. And it was very challenging to just try to figure out, like, oh, so we need a landing page, so there are instructions, but I want that landing page to go away on, like, a key down. And, um, and then the flow of, like, when the user finishes the game, I want to trigger the modal that says enter your username so we can save that score to local storage. But I want to be able to navigate to the high scores page and not have that modal pop up. So, so solving that problem was an interesting one for me. Um, I ended up using local storage to trigger a true or false. And yeah, so now I'm going to talk about our workflow. And that's one of the things that I'm actually really, really proud of. Um, this was the first time that I've ever worked on a team project. Um, before this, I've only been the sole contributor to, to repositories, and so um, I really wanted to make sure that all of us had a solid understanding of how the Git workflow worked, and Michelle was really kind to like sit us down and do a whole diagramming for us, and we practiced it. And, um, one of the challenges with, with our project was that it was a lot. We were working with a whole new library that none of us had ever worked with before. The API docs are not very well documented um, for the version three, and so all we needed all hands on deck. There, we couldn't just like sit all day and pair together. Like Every single one of us needed to be coding. And so in order to in order to avoid merge conflicts as best as we could, I mean, we like 50% of the time definitely had them. Um, we would signal each other on Slack, spam each other with messages of like, pull, 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 <laughs> drop everything and pull. <laughs> and, and yeah, I mean, this worked. This worked for us. And it was a lot of fun to, to just like have this log to reflect on how much work we've done together. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, some of you might have noticed that when we started the game, um, there was some music. And I just wanted to take some time and thank a really good friend of mine that, you know, took took time out of the schedule to make a little music for us. Um, but like Rebecca said, uh, everybody was you know, all hands on deck. I, I spent the majority of time in a love-hate relationship with Phaser because when it works, it's great. When, it's, when it doesn't, especially with Phaser 3.11 docs, yeah. it was just horrible. It was a headache. There was, we literally saw the owner of the library update the library, his own work, like three hours prior that was working, and we had to read through that as well. So um, we probably would have had a better time working with Phaser 2, which was, but we decided it might be you know, better for us to you know, try to understand something that's new, because that's probably something we might need to run in, in the future. Um, I was also you know, uh, 
charge of sprite creation from, from zero. And uh, unfortunately, we <laughs> we were really a little bit, you know, squished on time. So would have would have wanted to see it, you know, in better quality and stuff. But, yeah. It was amazing. <laughs> Oh yeah, I guess I should try to show it. It's a fun little thing we did that last minute. But um, gotta gotta give Suzanne credit for you know drawing that logo out. I mean, she literally downloaded you know Illustrator and worked on it like just you know took flight with it. We were all really impressed. But yeah, that was that's our app. Any questions? I noticed there's a, a certain icon that you guys have on your Git workflow. Can you tell us the story behind that? Oh yeah, oh, yeah. <laughs> we, don't know, we don't want to know about that. <laughs> this little thing right here, I think Brian would probably ask for the best. I'll, I'll take credit for this. <laughs> so as you guys know in class, kind of sit towards the front, and Jimmy's like right behind me. And so we were just, he was, he was slacking me like what was up on my picture, like what was on my computer screen. And so I was like, oh, this is uncomfortable. But, so I drew like this, this photo, I drew that. <laughs> and then, like, you can't see it, it's cut off, but it's like a little arrow that points to Jimmy. And so we just turned it into, like, this um, this picture here. And then you can see we turned it into little icons that you can add. It's next a name. emoji now. Yeah, so we turned it into an emoji. <laughs> and so if you see it, like, we, us responding with that emoji, it can mean anything, really. Uh, yeah. Anything else? And did you do all that in Sketch? Uh, I did it in Adobe. I just want to comment. Thanks for clarifying what that uh, little Slack icon was. <laughs> the other day, Rebecca put something in the, the like, class channel, and I was staring at it for a good like two minutes. Like, <laughs> <laughs> it's Jimmy. Yeah, oh, so okay. Oh, it's Jimmy. Oh, yeah. Okay. Uh, Colin, Jimmy. Oh, All right. <laughs> Yeah, so it, it actually it randomly generates. So each time, okay, yeah, if you go back to it. So if you restart it, then you can see that it just randomly generates each time. And so part of the logic in there is we, we figure out how many like sp spaces of platform the character can jump, which is three off of the two platforms. So we just made sure that the, there was logic built in that we didn't make like a completely impossible stressed out. <laughs> um, just one of the days and, and actually I was like, I, it was kind of imploding in the morning and Susie definitely helped me through that. So I was kind of working really slowly and like, I mean I was coding but it didn't feel good. And so Susie came over, she sat next to me and she was driving and she didn't tell me what I should be doing but she, she just asked questions like, okay, so what do we do now? Why are we doing this? What should we do next? And just having someone pace that work work for me was like the best part of the day. Yeah. Um, I also was pretty stressed out at one point because there was a lot of things left to do. Um, but I mean, rather than like just coding at it, we actually Rebecca and I just went for a walk. <laughs> Even though there was so many things that needed to be done, we. Know, we took a 30, 40 minute walk, maybe an hour. <laughs> Just kidding, it was like 40 minutes. And by the time we got back, I mean, we were able to finish so many things. Yeah. Where did you walk? Oh, around the science center.
it. We're good. All right. Uh, so thank you all for coming uh, and seeing our presentations. Um, so we will take a quick break in a sec. It sounds like you want to come and say hello. I just have to say a couple of things. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, hi. You guys all remember me. I'm Sasha. Um, a couple of things. Um, I want to introduce Ariana, who is our brand new program coordinator at Apprenti. It's week two for her, so go easy on her. Uh, <laughs> I want you guys to all prepare for previews of coming attractions. On September 24th, Microsoft has invited all of you to come for a meet and greet event with your teams. There will be delicious food and beer. I like both of those things. Um, so. I hope you're all available. I will be sending out details. And can I just get a quick show of hands? Who would find it helpful 